Well, we looked into it, and the Pentagon has been giving rather squishy numbers. We hear from $230 million to $320 million. And of course, it would be one thing if the peer were a success, because Americans are generous, but it's not been. And think about this, how your now wasted taxpayer money could have been spent. We estimate it could have paid for somewhere around 75.2 million free school lunches for hungry kids here at home. Or it could have paid the salaries of more than 2,500 new police officers for three years to keep our streets safer. And that hefty price tag, to give you more perspective, it's about one third of the funding for medical research for U.S. veterans and 100% of the United States National Park's budget for visitor services. Today, we reached out to the Pentagon for a comment, and they referred us to yesterday's Pentagon press briefing by Major General Pat Ryder. Here's part of what he said. In terms of the peer status, uh, as of right now, it's still in Ashdod. Um, my understanding is that CENTCOM intends to uh, tentatively re-anchor the peer this week, so we'll keep you updated on that. Republican representative for Florida, member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee and decorated U.S. Army veteran who also volunteered with the Israeli Defense Forces, Brian Mass joins me. Good evening, sir. In the United States, we're very generous people, the taxpayers, and we expect that our government be good stewards of our money, which, of course, you know, a lot of people roll their eyes at. But this was always going to be a, a losing project. They, they, they should have known this was going to be a problem. So why, why do we get into this? Look, I roll my eyes at it more than anybody. It came down to politics. The Biden administration wanted to show, say that they were doing something for Gaza at the same time that we were supporting our ally, Israel, Gaza, our non-ally. Uh, the exact number that we had put on it uh, as members of Congress was about 312 million. Put, uh, put that into perspective, that's about one-tenth of the entire annual Gaza GDP that was wasted on this one pier. And then some of the questions bring to mind, uh, Egypt, major ally. How was this administration not able to open up access to Egypt prior to building this pier? Uh, if they had to build this and it was so critical, so necessary that they do that, are they building a new one right now or was it not necessary at all? So why did they do it in the first place? Well, you know, but okay, let's first the part of that the, that the Biden administration wanted to do something. Okay, that's fair. I mean, they, they get, the Biden administration gets to make those decisions. It's the executive branch, and, and so they get to make that decision. That's not my beef. I mean, this was, this was so easily predictable to be a disaster. I mean, that they, they didn't even contemplate some of the weather conditions, some of the uh, other conditions that were going to create so many problems for this period. You wonder, like, where are our naval engineers? I mean, who, who made this decision? No, you're bringing up the exact analytical points that I would ask anybody to make. I, I have nothing to add to that. You're, you're making the right points. Hey, uh, what are going to be the weather conditions? How much can you move through there? When is it going to be operational? Are there mother or other more accessible ways to get that in instead of moving it over the water? Who are our major allies around there that we can move goods through? Well, guess what? If they were able to build tunnels into Egypt, uh, from Gaza to Egypt, then there's probably a capability to move goods into Egypt, not even using tunnels. But if you had to, why not just use the tunnels instead of, again, spending $312 million on that waste of American taxpayer dollars? And, and again, just the point that I make, uh, you said, well, hey, we are Americans with a good heart. We are Americans with a good heart, but our ally is at war with our non-ally. And for me, that equals do not support our non-ally. All right, let me talk about, for me, um, you have a very distinguished military career. And let me switch topics a little bit for a second. Is that, you know, everybody watched the debate with uh, President Biden, former President Donald Trump. And a lot of, there's a lot of attention on politics. Who's going to win? Who's going to not? Is, is President Biden going to stay in the race or not? But you have served overseas. I think it's probably no secret to the men and women in uniform what happened um, that night at the debate, what they saw. Do you have any sort of thought of some, you know, how you think some of the military might feel overseas as they see the commander-in-chief look like a very elderly man who may not be up to the task? I think for any of our military that's used to consuming intelligence, they look at this and they say, while the left-wing media might have been gaslighting the American people, they're smart enough to know that all of the foreign intelligence agencies they weren't gaslighting the leaders of their country. Those foreign intelligence agencies that would have people at public speaking engagements, that were watching videos, maybe had people at fundraisers, they were assessing exactly and honestly what was going on with Biden. They were telling that to the leaders, military and political leaders of their countries, and they were using that and still are to this moment to take advantage of President Biden, to take advantage of anything that they can, whether it be military, whether it be intelligence, whether it be diplomacy, you name it, here in the United States, because they see what's taking place and they don't have the luxury of gaslighting their leaders.